In March 2024, we sailed on the celebrity eclipse around the tip of South America, starting from the port of Valparaiso, Chile. We arrived to check in our luggage at the scheduled time, and the initial check-in and security processes were quick and easy. A bus took us to the boat for a smooth embarkation. Details of the Eclipse cruise ship itself are in our video tour. The link is in the description below. The port of Valparaiso is the most important in Chile as the headquarters for the Chilean Navy and as the container port closest to the capital, Santiago. It was interesting to watch port operations from one of the ship's outdoor bars. underway before sunset. In the middle of the night, a passenger had a medical emergency and our ship returned to port, continuing on through the night after dropping them off. The morning of day two, we were back in the open ocean with calm seas and we even briefly caught sight of the Chilean coast on the horizon. Day three was another sea day on mostly calm waters, and we even saw a black albatross circling the ship. Milos Radakovich, celebrity's onboard naturalist, gave a talk in the main theater about how plate tectonics and glaciers from the last ice age shaped the southern tip of South America, and created the channels and fjords we would be seeing in the coming days. As we approached the fjords, the weather worsened significantly. The rough seas made walking around the ship challenging, the pools were closed, and everything was clouded over. Our channel into the fjords was barely visible. As we moved into the channels, the storm broke and the sun even came out, so we got to see a lot of the beauty of this part of Chile. As the day waned, we passed the narrowest part of our journey kept sailing into the night. As the sun rose the next morning, we entered the Strait of Magellan. Though the strait is named for the Portuguese navigator Ferdinand Magellan, the first European to sail through it 500 years ago, these rugged, breathtakingly beautiful waters and surrounding lands have been inhabited, fished, and negotiated by humans for at least 13,000 years. Magellan's achievement did secure the first water route between the Atlantic and Pacific for Spain, and the strait was one of the most strategic passages in the world until the opening of the Panama Canal in 1914. In the late afternoon of our fifth day, the captain announced that a passenger needed urgent medical care and was to be evacuated off the ship. So shortly after, we stopped in the middle of the channel, and a Chilean Navy helicopter landed on the ship's helipad. We had a full view of the incredible operation from our stateroom window, and the link to the complete medevac video is in the description below. We sailed onward down the strait, all the way through sunset. Despite the two medical emergency delays, the captain was able to get us to our first port of call, Punta Arenas, Chile, as scheduled the next morning. Punta Arenas, Sandy Point in English, is the largest city south of the 46th parallel and is farther south than any city outside of South America. Located in the northern part of the Strait of Magellan and founded in 1843, 
It's the first successful permanent settlement in the region. Since Magellan first sailed past in November of 1520, the Spanish attempted two other settlements, but they quickly failed due to the harsh climate and difficult access to food and water. Punta Arenas was formed as a penal colony and grew from the 1890 Patagonia Gold Rush, and parts of the city still feel like a 19th century frontier town. The small Naval History Museum is worth a visit. There's an exhibit on Magellan's expedition, of course, including information on the strait and the Asian spices that were the primary draw for the expedition. There's also a scale model of the Victoria, the only one of Magellan's five ships to complete the circumnavigation. Exhibits on more recent Chilean naval history include the ill-fated HMS Endurance, trapped in Antarctic ice during the 1914 expedition of British explorer Ernest Shackleton. Chilean pilot Luis Pardo led the expedition from Punta Arenas to rescue Shackleton and his crew. Punta Arenas is still a major base for cruises and expeditions to the Antarctic. The museum also has information on the modern Chilean Navy, including a scale model of the helicopter that executed the medevac. The city is the southernmost of the five Chilean naval bases, so the helicopter was undoubtedly based here. Tourism is a significant part of the city's economy. For its 19th century buildings and access to the wilds of Patagonia. Cruise ships like ours stop here during warmer months, though the weather is always temperamental. Another storm was rolling in after we got back to the ship. We sailed back south down the Strait of Magellan, and as the sun was setting, the lone peak of Monte Sarmiento loomed in front of us. Continuing on overnight, we were anchored in the Beagle Channel at sunrise, just outside Argentine waters near Ushuaia. While the crew handled our paperwork with Argentine authorities. You see photos of Ushuaia, but they just don't prepare you for how stunningly beautiful the city truly is. We had a bus excursion scheduled right after breakfast and were picked up at the boat since we booked through the cruise line. We headed out of town and were officially exploring Argentina, our 49th country to visit together. We entered Tierra del Fuego National Park and continued on to the end of the road, passing near the Chilean border. This spot marks the end of Argentina Route 3 that traverses Tierra del Fuego province and is the southern terminus of the Pan American Highway running 30,000 miles north to Prudhoe Bay, Alaska. A short walk away, La Pataya Bay is breathtaking. Around 10,000 years ago, the first humans crossed the Strait of Magellan in canoes and became the area's first inhabitants. Ushuaia, La Pataya, and other regional names come from their language. And Magellan spotted their cooking fires as he sailed past, so he dubbed it Land of Smoke, later changed to Land of Fire, Tierra del Fuego. Numbering in the thousands, when Europeans encountered them in the 19th century, only about 200 live in Tierra del Fuego today. The QR code in this sign gives some good detailed information Ushuaia was the midpoint of the cruise, and there's so much more to come. Be sure to subscribe so you don't miss out on the rest of this incredible adventure.